Okay, here we are. Stranger and Strangest. Oh my god, this episode was insane. This one, and especially part two. That was the point. I wanted to have an episode that was just so completely nuts. Like, Over the Edge in Batman the Animated Series. And some of you have already made the connection. Um, yeah, I just wanted to have one thing. One episode where everything goes completely insane. And... Everything that goes, that can go wrong, does. And I did that. Like, plus, I needed to introduce, um, a character for, um, season three. Or, and even later in this season, uh, Azrael. And I worked him in, and I thought, well, hey, why not hit two birds with one stone? <clears throat> I altered... Azrael's powers in this, as opposed to in the comics, his powers aren't, he doesn't really have, like, this, this kind of, uh, you know, like, um, skill, or any, any of this, um, but I'm, I'm gonna explain that, okay, because I know Azrael's usually cannot reverse time and split continents, I, I am completely aware of that, and none of you, I don't, I don't think any of you have made that, made that, uh, connection yet, but, um, or if you have, you haven't said, but yeah, that, I, I, that will be explained. Okay. In season three, um, that was on purpose. So don't worry about that. Cause you know, you know how I feel about consistencies. Hmm. <clears throat> and, uh, well, you know, Jean-Paul Valley, I, I had to bring him in and, uh, because some of you already know what I'm doing in season three with him. Well, anyone, <laughs> like, some of you know from, say, the comics, or the hints I've given, or even the surveys, um, you know where he's going, and you know what's happening with him, and you know why he's here. And this was, the, I think, I think, no, this was the second appearance of Lucius Fox, this was the first appearance that I ever did, because I made the, these were the, this was the very first episode of season two I ever made, um... It was it was this and then part two, uh, and then that then it was, uh, I think was it Gotham's two hundredth? Yeah, I think that was I think Gotham's two hundredth was the third one I did, but this was the first, and uh, I had to, and I had to bring in the Daggets, um, because, well, you know there was Roland Daggett from the comics and the animated series, and there's John from the Dark Knight Rises, so I thought. Why not just have both, and they can be brothers, and I'll kill one off this season. <laughs> and I did, I killed John this season. But Roland's still kicking, you'll see him in season three. I keep saying that, you know, I have to just keep saying, you'll see them in season three, and it's true, because season three, I don't know how to say, like, it is completely, like, oh, it's huge, it is massive, it's over 30 episodes, every single character that is not dead, um, appears. Um, so a whole, a whole lot of new characters come in. Some of the characters from Nightwing, uh, show up. Like, I think it's, I think three of them show up. Um, oh god. Um, and, uh, you'll see a lot of um, a lot of characters you probably, you probably didn't expect to see, um, especially in the, uh, later half of the season. But anyways, enough season three baiting. Um, this was how, Bru how Strange found out Bruce's identity. Now, I only had a short amount of time to do this. I had to do this within an episode's length, like have him figure it out. And I, th I, th I thought it would be too, um... Well, too convenient to show to have it to reveal that Strange has been following Bruce around all this time when I haven't even shown Strange at all. So I I, I had to do this quickly, and so how I did that was I ha I did it similar to the way he did in the animated series. He figured it out, um, you know, with this with a machine that he has, but this machine he funded with uh with, like, Wayne Enterprises' money after receiving the company, you know? Um, and so it's kind of ironic that 
Bruce's own company kind of ruined his whole life. And again, this is not an alternate universe. This did happen. All of this did happen until Azrael reversed time, you know? But this this is this is what would happen. Whereas in um Over the Edge it was all um a hallucination of Batgirls. Here it was all I was showing you this there is nothing exaggerated. This is what would happen if uh well, I guess if he if Strange got the company. <clears throat> and of course we know that um Daniel Mockridge ended up getting it because well well we'll get to that in part two, won't we? This was actually from another um I saw this from in a comic. I don't remember which one. It was where Mad Hatter and I think I think I think it was Penguin gave Batman a mind control hat and had him do all these horrible things. Um and so I thought I'd go one step further and have him murder the mayor, which I think was a good enough uh drive for Bullock to turn on him so much. Well, I mean like Bullock already hated him, but he didn't like you know think he would do anything like this. And now see that like that is <laughs> Plus, you, I love I love doing death scenes, and the fact, and like, doing all these fake death scenes, it was good enough for me. Because, you know, like, because they were all really dying. <laughs> like Gordon's jacket, I, I, didn't, I don't think I talked about it. Um, I didn't even cut that myself. I, my uh, grandfather did it. Um, because I knew he could do a better job than I could with that, because I wanted to give him a jacket, because in the animated series, in the comics, he and even in the um, movies, he had a, a brown jacket. And I was like, well, I need that. I need to give him one, because he, he's not um, just any cop. He's the police commissioner. He is James Gordon. Um, and while I wish I could give Bullock a gray hat, I have a gray hat now, but it'd be, it, again, it's consistency <laughs> you're probably sick of hearing that word uh and now here's batman versus robin uh freaking nuts wanted to show you that in the in this event batman would still win because you know he's he's the mentor robin is the sidekick uh well partner but i guess sidekick is even more of a reason for him to quit later on huh because I give him a lot of reasons to quit. Well, I, some of you noticed that. Like, the whole season was basically just me building up to Robin quitting. And, you know, going out on his own. And, yeah, it was. Um, it was originally supposed to be just a subplot. But I guess it kind of consumed the whole story, right? Um, that was unintentional. Uh, and, see, I... The betrayal here, I uh, I did that on I did that um, so that to show that Robin does he really he really values Bruce's Bruce's values um, about no killing and his and how he's so like you know he's he's loyal he's loyal to the law he breaks it and he bends it but he's loyal to it he respects it. Um, and Bruce, in Robin's eyes, went totally against the law and his own values and just forsook them. What? Is that even a word? For s I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and then, of course, uh, so then he revealed the location of the Batcave because he didn't want to see Bruce become a total maniac. Which I guess wasn't a good idea after all because he, well, he couldn't have known that Azrael would show up, right? Uh, you know, uh, I really like these episodes. I think of all the two-parters I did, I think these were the best ones, like this one. And it was because, okay, well, you know what? I'll get into the whole two-parter problem next episode, okay, in part two. Yeah, okay, so uh, that's all, and I will see you. Goodbye.